what is going on guys it is a fine fine super fine day here in southwest pa and in today's video we are going to be talking about tips and tricks for new riders and i'm hoping these are things that you haven't actually heard before or heard too often in other moto vlogs so that's why i want to make a little bit of a wager with you if i say two things in this video that you haven't heard or considered please consider dropping a like. If I say three things in this video that you haven't heard or at least considered, how about uh, consider dropping a sub? And if I say three or more things, consider liking and subscribing. That would really help me and really uh, help me know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So let's get right into it. The very first thing is to watch who you watch and that includes me, myself, and I and a bunch of other moto vloggers out there. If you're watching this video, you're obviously in the learning process or you're a loyal sub, and I really appreciate that if that's you. But if you're a new rider, you're goo or you're typing up tips for new riders, blah, 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 blah. Pay attention to who you're watching and make sure that you're getting good information. So if you are looking up best gear for new motorcycle riders and you come across a motor vlog and you're watching it, and they're talking about the importance of wearing motorcycle gear, but they themselves are not wearing any motorcycle gear, right? That doesn't make any sense. So maybe that person isn't the best person to watch. I'm not saying that they can't give good information because they most certainly can, but logically speaking, it, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. There's obviously a lot of great content out there for new motorcycle riders, for safety and things like that. Moto Jiu Jitsu, Dan Dan the Fireman, Moto Stars. Those are obviously like the big ones that a lot of people watch. I'm a big fan of Dan Dan the Fireman and Moto Stars because if you are a new rider, like let's say you don't even have your motorcycle yet, you're waiting to get your bike, but you're watching all these videos, good on you. You are so far ahead of the game, it's not even funny. You will do so well in your motorcycle career. But what you're doing is you're exercising your brain to start picking up these things to start understanding these things. And by the time you get into the real world situation, you will be much further ahead. But say you do got your bike and all this stuff, same thing, doesn't matter. You are exercising your brain, watching these things, understanding that these things exist. And your brain is learning to pick out patterns because it's all about patterns. And your brain is learning that and you are exercising that. So, again, a lot of great content out there. Moto Jiu Jitsu is really good for like so speed and like technique kind of stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of Canyon Chasers just because they're a little bit more, uh, a little bit more technical and I, I really appreciate that. So, you know, that's just me. Um, you know, speaking of me, I'm, I'm trying to get my, uh, my, uh, uh, safety instructor next next spring so I can increase the validity of my channel and if that's something you would like to see please consider subscribing to the channel I would really really appreciate that um, but yeah just watch who you watch the second thing I would say for new riders my second tip is something that would usually be like towards the end of a video but I do think it's really important so I do want to say this now and that is enjoy the learning process there are so many things in life that you only get to experience once and once it's gone it's gone you can't take back time you can't get that feeling again you know your first kiss going through high school and graduating these are all things that you only get to experience once that's kind of why i have an issue with um people who start off on 600s and uh 1000 cc motorcycles nothing against them you know yeah you know people can argue they won't get the, the right training or they're going to kill themselves or blah 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 i'm not really talking about that part of it i'm talking about the fact that you know they they are kind of capped if they start on a 600 or a 1000 cc motorcycle with the excitement 
For example, whenever I took my MSF course, I wrote a BMW, I think it was a 301 or 310, so a 300cc BMW. That bike felt like the biggest machine I've ever sat on. Never been on a motorcycle before. That realization of, hey, this is actually heavy equipment. Like, this is a real life situation. Like, you know what I mean? And then learning that bike and learning everything about it and getting comfortable with it and then progressing through the bike was a great experience and then when i got my ninja 650 the same thing when i sat on my 650 for the first time that bike felt like the biggest motor motorcycle to me the fastest motorcycle to me and i was intimidated by it for about a day or two it was the weight thing that really got me but that bike felt like the biggest thing and then you get used to it and then you're like okay this isn't so bad and then you 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 grow on your bike you learn these skills and you grow on your motorcycle if you do that with a 600 or a thousand cc bike you're capped that there is nothing else you know so like after my 650 whenever i took demo days and i rode bigger and bigger bikes and you know rode inline fours rode that triumph speed twin 1200 was a fantastic motorcycle i love that motorcycle then i got to ride some big baggers on the indian demo day a lot of a lot of interesting motorcycles i kept getting that feeling again you know and that's because i didn't start off on such a massive beast of a motorcycle again i understand there's going to be there's going to be um you know differences and there's there's, there's going to be exceptions to the rule that's just my personal opinion about it i mean it's it, it's just one of those things that you you really do only experience once so whatever motorcycle you get just enjoy the learning process don't rush it learn at your own comfort don't let others uh uh, influence you into doing things that you're not ready for because you are the only one who's going to pay for your actions if you were chasing your buddy and your buddy has a higher skill set than you and you wreck i doubt he's going to pay for your bike and now you're out of the season hopefully not seriously injured so enjoy the learning process it's a great time you know it, it's 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 just a great time so really honestly uh, try to enjoy the whole situation the third thing is heat and now i'm not talking about heat as in um you know dehydration and not being able to work your controls because you're you know heat fatigued and all that stuff that is legitimate but that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about aggravation and thinking and reacting on aggravation whenever it's super hot outside i'll give you an example i'm a butcher i got off work i work in a cooler it's like 95 degrees outside with like 80 percent humidity it's miserable absolutely miserable and you know people in traffic are being stupid or to me they were being stupid so i got really mad i got really aggressive did a bunch of uh maneuvers around people and before you know it i put myself in a situation because the a guy about 200 yards in front of me he was stopped but i didn't know that he was stopped because he had a trailer like a like a, a lawn care trailer and the truck's brake lights were on and engaged but the trailer's brake lights were not on and engaged and i aggressively progressively uh hit my front brakes and got that bike from 50 to zero in a couple seconds very important to practice your progressive braking as you know but that could have been avoided because that could have been avoided if i wasn't thinking on uh, aggravation right and i wasn't annoyed that put me in a really bad situation really quickly too that that whole situation went down in like seven seconds from getting annoyed to slamming on my brakes and looking like an idiot i hit my brakes so hard that my front tires skid like i heard my front tires skid that's because i don't have abs but whether you do or don't have abs practice your emergency braking emergency swerves you never want to do something for the first time in that emergency situation it has to be second nature so definitely practice you know that so i'm not going to preach on that but practice and another thing with heat too is and this was interesting you guys know i'm a all gear all the time all the you know all all the gear all the time situation kind of rider 
but this time I wasn't riding my pants, wearing my riding pants because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be way too hot. I'm gonna pass out. I was actually more cool wearing my riding pants than not wearing my riding pants because that bike puts off a lot of heat. All the exhaust from all the cars around you, they put off a lot of heat. The road puts off a lot of heat. The metal from the cars put off a lot of heat. The sun coming through your visor puts off a lot of heat. So there's a lot of stuff going on. If you're not wearing a jacket, your skin's absorbing all of that heat and you're gonna feel all of that and it's gonna be much, much worse. So wear your gear. I know it sounds, you know, like it sounds weird, but it will make you cooler if you wear your gear. Trust me on that. The next thing is seasonal hazards. Now I'm not really talking about like rain and sleet and snow and stuff like that. I'm talking about like weird things that could be specific to your location, right? I live in Southwest PA, so these are some of the things that I run into in my area. So for spring, you have uh, hidden ice and shadows. So in spring, you have uh, cold mornings, warm afternoons, you're going to get a lot of freeze thaw action. So that freeze thaw is going to run off into the roads. At night, it's going to freeze. If there's a hill or some kind of shadow over that ice, it will melt the ice that's in the uh, that's in the sun, but it won't melt the ice that's in the snow or in the shadow. Rather, that's, that is a legitimate thing. Um, the sun's not all that potent in the in the early spring, so it's it's very deceiving. Also, with freeze thaw that we were talking about, you're going to have a lot of situations where um, water freeze, freezes and thaws in a soil column, and that's going to create a lot of porosity, and that's going to create a lot of instability. So when it does rain, you have a lot, uh, much higher probability of soil runoff, and it's always going to be in the most convenient of you know spots, usually at a blind hill curve or whatever. So you know, spring, those are kind of my my areas plus you have a lot of people who are just now excited to get back on the road and get out doing stuff because they've been cooped up all winter so you're going to have a lot more people on the road a lot more people not really thinking and they're definitely not going to be thinking about motorcycles so watch out for that summer we already discussed the summer um the heat and you know you you are going to have uh, more severe storms so you know unless you storm chase on a motorcycle which i do recommend i'm kidding it, it's fun I, I i do it but I, you know i'm kind of an idiot but it's uh you know storms so definitely pay attention to the weather channel you know get a little bit of meteor meteorology background it'll definitely help you out uh fall you have a lot of situations with fall here in southwest pa you have in October, you have water still being warm, but the air being cold. So that's going to create a lot of fog, and especially in an area where you have a lot of hills and valleys, that's going to drain the fog into low areas, and it can get quite thick, and it can really stick around sometimes. So don't forget to uh, kind of uh, be aware that that happens again for me in southwest pa that always happens around october end of august beginning part of october you're going to start having a lot of water chestnuts and monkey balls or whatever they're called being dropped from trees a lot of fruit like nut trees are going to be dropping their dropping their nuts and that is going to cause a lot of hazards either if you run over them directly or those things get run over and they start getting um they start getting really slippery. Uh, deer are also a big thing. You're gonna have deer getting shot at, and then you're gonna have deer in rut. So deer getting shot at. Um, in November, you're gonna have deer going into rut into late um, August or mid to late October. So we're gonna have all of these kind of situations going on. And in the wintertime, people really aren't gonna be looking for you. They don't really expect an idiot to be on a motorcycle, but you know, here we are. See, that's the other thing, like, like, you know, some of these snow trucks or plow trucks rather, their salt thing keeps on spinning, even when they're at like stop signs and stop lights. So like we come up here, and you can see uh, there actually wasn't that much there, maybe because it all uh, broke down or whatever. But like right here is a shoot ton of salt right there. And again, these are just these are just things in my area. 
um, I, I would really appreciate uh, if you would drop some comments about some seasonal hazards or maybe as you're thinking about it now some seasonal hazards that might be in your area because you know every area is going to be a little bit different and you're you know people by beaches are going to have sand and all that stuff so you know just try not to neglect seasonal hazards and you live in your area so you know what's going on maybe you just got to pay a little bit more attention and get ready for your uh, your first season all right let's check this one more time nothing's leaking out of the drain bolt um, nothing is leaking out of the oil filter wonder if this uh, is actually recording that would be a pain in my butt which is usually what the situation is so uh, now all I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to ride around and um, maybe uh, give you one more tip for new riders kind of like a bonus thing but I do got to ride it real quick to make sure that everything is working as it should all right guys so uh here's uh here's one of the, the big ones that i really wanted to to tell you guys as far as tips for new riders and this is kind of like a a bonus thing while i'm running around i do have some oil on my exhaust which is kind of burning off which is whatever um but you know it kind of is what it is but the, the second thing i really want or not the second thing whatever number this is um is to, to set yourself up for a turn especially turns whenever you are stopped look at this turn coming up i can make a left right or straight if i'm making a left turn i don't necessarily want to be in the left lane because that's going to make the turn sharper but if i'm making a left turn and i'm all the way over here i have a much wider easier time to make that turn the second thing that you can do which is a, a a major major thing whenever you're um trying to set yourself up is to not only be in the the right lane position but to also have your wheel pre-turned because if your wheel's straight and you're going through the turn and this is not wrong to have your wheel straight and go through the turn i'm just saying if you're a new rider and you're trying to make things a little bit easier on yourself if you're in the late right lane position the correct lane position and you're turning and have it turned the wheel is already going to go in that motion so you're not going to go straight and then turn you're going to make the turn even easier so if i'm making this left turn i'm all the way over here to make the turn easier instead of going straight right because i would go straight and then turn if i already have the wheel turned and then go look i'm already in the turn this is a church this is very busy on this side and this side with vehicles so it's an extra tight turn so again if you are in the right lane position the correct lane position and you have your wheel pre-turned you'll be good to go so if i'm making this uh, right hand turn i have my turn signal on i have the wheel already turned look we're already turning in the direction that we want to go again it's not wrong to have your wheel straight and then do it like that that's not what i'm saying but if you're a new rider it will make it a little bit easier now let me warn you before you start doing that make sure you really got your friction zone down because if you don't and you start stalling and you grab a fistful of brake if that wheel is already pre-turned that force is going to turn over the bike in that direction right so if i'm say i'm uh, at a turn and i have my wheel pre-turned and i'm going and i the bike jolts and i grab the bike that bike's falling right over there every single time um so just watch out for that make sure you are good to go uh, i'm just double checking to make sure that this is not leaking that is not leaking that is fantastic make sure this is not leaking that is not leaking that is also fantastic all right guys well thank you so much for watching i hope that this video was all right 
Um, I hope the watching me change my oil was all right and the the footage was okay and all that. I don't know. It's kind of a spur of the moment thing. I'm really trying to get back into moto vlogs because I've been out for so long. If you know, you know. Um, so it is just kind of is what it is. I am going to go and open this thing up on the highway real quick just to get that uh, oil filter under more pressure just to double check and make sure everything is officially sealed off ready to go oil levels good and all that but thank you guys so much for watching if you learned something today don't forget to like share and subscribe and uh that's the third gear that's no bueno and i will see you guys in the next one what are you doing my guy all right oh i forgot to uh set my trip um it's this one so i want to hold this right is that it is that how you do it yes zero miles so now i know that i have zero miles on my oil i have 1300 on these tires already which is insane okay good all right take care